So if you don't want to go holistic, you don't want to involve philosophy, spirituality, you can put that aside and only go by the classical, not classical, I should say, but more empirical, leading to scientific part of it. So we have both approaches possible with the modular model of it, holistic approach and near to classical. Just to revise why heat, why have I created this system? Heat has been created for seven objectives. First, integration of schools of psychoanalysis. Second, integration of epistemology into psychoanalysis. And what I have done here is taken two parts of epistemology. One, the process of knowing of Immanuel Kant, which is sensation, perception, conception, knowledge, and if you put wisdom. And then the epistemological elementals like time, space, relation, quality, quantity, and added to it this list, certain elements from my side, certain elements from epistemological writings of other philosophers and created this part in the system where we add epistemology to allow us to go deeper into those psychoanalytic phenomena that we believe are at the root of pathology. Third objective is integration of East and West which is achieved by integrating knowledge from Tantra model of the mind, Sri model of the mind, yogic psychology. So integration of East and West, not only in terms of model of the mind, also in terms of healing practices. Fourth is creating a holistic model of the mind, which has been done in heat. Fifth, creating a holistic and elemental system of analysis. That is to say, we don't stop at the level of phenomena, but we go deeper into the epistemological process in that phenomena and epistemological elementals which are used in that epistemological process. Sixth, create a holistic healing system. So we take anchor into the five body system of the East, the physical body, energy body, emotional body, thought body, karmic body. And then we have the bliss body and pure consciousness. So the first five are where pathology is or can be located and that is where healing has to be largely done. So a holistic healing system. And this series of heat and DSM-5 naturally goes beyond psychoanalysis and DSM-5. Uh, in the series psychoanalysis and DSM-5, we stopped by integrating various schools of psychoanalysis. Now we look at getting deeper by bringing in epistemology and bringing in the Eastern knowledge and creating the holistic system. How do you practice the heat system? The heat system is divided into five parts. First is case history taking, which is slightly different from the way you take case history in the conventional sense. Second is psychological testing, which also is slightly different from the way we go through this phase in the classical sense. Third is pathogenesis. It's a very holistic and elemental pathogenesis. Then developing the holistic healing plan. And as a part of this holistic healing plan, one element of this is therapy. So how do you do heat therapy? So this is these are the five parts of heat from healing standpoint. If you go into the model of the mind, 
that's a separate part of it altogether. If you go into the philosophical and spiritual aspects, that's a separate part of it. But from a strictly healing standpoint, these are the five parts of the healing part of the heat system. And if you see case history, taking of case history, that further is divided into five parts. Psychological testing divided into three parts. Pathogenesis, five parts. So there are subdivisions and each of these divisions can be further divided into sub-subdivisions. Let us go one by one into details of each of these five. First, we take up case history. So we take the information like in classical case history. We start with personal particulars. We go into complaints. We go into history of present illness. We go into the onset development and progress. All of that we do. We go into mental state and status examination. All of that we do. But additionally, what we do is this. We take this, the story of the patient of his suffering. How does he see his suffering? What is the story of his suffering? How does his? Second, we look at if the patient is interested in spiritual and mystical life. By mystical life, we mean his interest in energy healing, in mystical practices, in mystical systems, and so on. By spiritual, we refer to his belief in reincarnation, karma, goal of life. And if he believes in these things, how does he feel? Or how does he account for? Or how does he describe using this part of his knowledge also the story of his son? We then look at his dream collection. And there is a specific format for recording the dreams. And then we go add the first observation report. The first observation report mentions how you feel in the presence of the person when you meet him the first time. And the more sorted you are and the more you know about yourself, you can look inside of you and see what do you feel in his presence and out of that, what is your material and what is coming because of him? And here we look at personality into five parts biological, social, idealistic, intellectual, artistic, mystical, and spiritual. Sorry, seven parts. So we describe the personality in seven parts. We describe the defenses used ego strength, capacity to bear effect, socio economic reality situation. How do you feel in his presence, which is the most important? And how do you look at him? Does he appear feminine or masculine? Is the contra gender very important? Do you have a peacock feeling? What is your instinct? Trust your instinct. So all these go into FOR, which adds to the whole case history taking. So the case history taking, in addition to the classical elements, also includes these parts. That is how it differs from the classical. Second part, Psychological testing. Here, three tests are very important for us. All of these are projection tests, but word association, sentence completion, story creation. If possible, go for story creation. If not possible, come to sentence completion. If not possible, word association. TAT or CAT. And if psychosis is suspected or is clear, then maybe Rosha. In case of personality disorder also, Rosha can be used. Second is, these are generally preferred tests. Second is problem focused test. Based upon the problems, either you can go for IQ, social relations or autism. And third is, pranic healing, if you know, there are certain tests of pranic healing to know which chakras are overloaded or depleted and what part of what is being said is true or not true. And from which body the core difficulty is arising. And is it karmic or non-karmic? Or if you want a yes-no answer, you can have a yes-no answer in pranic healing on anything within heat that is difficult to know otherwise. 
And if you know pulse reading, then Ayurvedic part also is very important. Ayurvedic part also will come in in healing, but even in diagnosis, if you know the pulse reading of Ayurveda, then it becomes very important. So you can, this is the way the second part, psychological testing is structured. The, this 2.1 and 2.2 are classical, 2.3 is an add-on. Third part of the heat system is pathogenesis. How do you do pathogenesis? This is one of the four parts where heat differs from classical approach. Pathogenesis starts, of course you can do diagnosis separately according to DSM, but pathogenesis starts after that. First, we take the story of the symptoms. Take up each symptom and go into its story. How has it developed? How did it set on? How does the onset development and progress happen? What is the story of the person himself about the symptoms? How does he do uh, free association related to the symptoms? How does he do active imagination related to the symptoms? Are there any dreams related to any of the symptoms? What does he feel in the social setting related to each of the symptoms? What is it told by people? So all this put together is the story of the symptom. Second is general event causation, which we'll look at in a moment. This is a philosophical model that tries to explain why anything happens at all. It's a model of general event causation. And because the event of pathology also is one of the events in the world, the general model would apply to that also with additions and deletions. Rather, I should say, deletions and modifications, not additions. After applying the general event position, which we'll see in a moment, how do you apply? We go to the holistic school analysis, where we take all schools of psychoanalysis, if possible, any school outside of psychoanalysis, and look at the problem and see how each school offers a causal phenomena to explain the pathology. Let us say there is a problem of paranoia and Freudian school has explanation one, Kleinian school two, Bohusian school three. Based upon the case history, we feel that the Freudian principle is more applicable. So then we eliminate the other two and we go with the Freudian principle. And then when we say that paranoia is because of repressed homosexuality and the process is I love you, I hate you, I hate you, I will kill you, I will kill you, you will kill me. Defense is operating at every stage. So if this is the process we believe is the causal process, then we take the process and go into the depth of it. This is called core process analysis. That the psychoanalytic or the cognitive behavior or whatever process we feel is at the root of it. We take that process and we then go in details of that process. So first in that part we do is critical intra-process analysis that if you look at this whole process of I love you, I hate you, I love you, reaction formation, I hate you. I hate you, magnification, I will kill you. I will kill you, reaction formation, uh, I kill you, uh, projection, you will kill me. Therefore, the paranoia. So one of the core, if you do intra-process analysis of this process, the core is guilt formation. That I love you, I hate you. So I love you produces that guilt and that results in the use of reaction formation to I hate, I hate. And then the derivatives keep happening. But the core problem there is that if you look at the intra-process dynamics, it essentially becomes super ego pathology. Which does not look super ego pathology at the surface. At the level of phenomena, does not look like a super ego pathology, but only when you point to the intra phenomena analysis, 
that is the first is intra critical intra process events then you go into why this guilt is abnormally high so you go into the general event causation model applied to the guilt we'll see it in a moment then we go into general process analysis that if this process is happening Is it happening because nothing else can happen or could this process have taken a different route? What if the guilt was not so high? And if the guilt is so high, maybe the family input or the society input is very high. So if that is the cause of guilt, maybe if you change that or if you cannot, then you accept it as a part, but you work upon it in analysis. So what is the context in which the process is taking place? If this not process, if not this process, what alternative situation could have happened? Is this process leading to some other process? Is this process happening in the context of some other prior experience? That's the general process analysis. And then we go into the holistic elemental analysis, which has two parts. First is the effect generating part of it like when you say i love you and the guilt arises and then you say i hate you which means i love you is interpreted in some context how is that interpretation happening so we apply the epistemological process there and the epistemological elemental state. Similarly, this is the cognitive part. And then we go into how in that whole thing, effect is generated. Like from guilt, how do you move to hate? And why so much of hate? Why not less of it? Because then the rest of it is a derivative. So the effect generation, and again in effect generation, we apply the elemental process epistemological process and the epistemological elements. And thereby the ultimate understanding happens in terms of the epistemological process and even deeper epistemological elements. So the epistemological elementals are the most elemental uh, units of analysis. And then we move to the Considering all this put together, we move to the holistic pathogenesis or heat pathogenesis. Now going into the story of the symptoms, because we are going one by one into it, we'll take one by one of this whole thing. The first part in the story is the description of the symptoms. Second is the experience. Third is the meaning if he sees any. Fourth is rise and fall of the symptoms. When has it happened? What was the context? What events happened or did not happen? Dreams, fantasy, free association. Asking the person, how would life experience be without the system, without the symptom? How would have it be if you did not have the symptom for the last 15 years? Or how will it be when it goes up? Active imagination about the symptom. Creative work with the symptom if you are into art therapy or any other form of therapy, which is narrative or creative in nature. And how does he see life post healing without the symptom? It's very necessary to create a good goal and hope. Second part is the general event causation model. So we say any event in the universe happens because of these 11 causes. And it's a system of over-determination. Each of them can cause something or a combination of them can cause something. Or all of them can together cause something. So we apply these two at two parts. One is uh, first to the symptom and then We apply it here to the yeah 
here to the core process after holistic school analysis and to the elementals. So first we apply it to the symptoms and then we apply it to the core process. So the most common in order of listing are the causes of pathology. Most of pathologies will be caused because of some law of nature and somebody's free will, especially that of the parents, working together with the laws of nature. These two will be the core determinants in the majority of the cases. In case of psychosis, personality disorders, mental retardation, autism, anything chronic or difficult, once karma also comes in. And here we deviate from classical science. We bring in the element of karma. Free will of the self in case of certain things like addiction. Journey of the self. The soul may have chosen to experience certain things. Say for example, some forms of addiction, some forms of personality disorder, some forms of uh, bisexuality, some forms of multiple personality. And this 0.6 to 0.11, they are not very common in determination of pathology, but they can be there. Karma of others when you are traumatized by somebody for no fault of yours. This also is a non-scientific thing. Supra-human forces and beings. It also brings in the element of energy devouring beings who come in after the pathology or at times creating the pathology. Journey of the universe. Chance of course is accident. Journey of the universe where somebody can be given a difficulty so that the progress is not too fast or somebody can be given a difficulty so the progress does not become too slow. Karma created by the principle is very rare. This will be to very strong people, relevant to very strong people or advanced on the yogic path. Freedom of reality, usually to those who are about to do something very difficult and otherwise cannot be stopped by the karmic law. Holistic school analysis, we put together the various schools, as many as we know, try to find out why a pathology has been created. Take some schools from East, some from West, and then we have the heat model in terms of this also, we can analyze. We'll see it later. Core process analysis, the fourth part of pathogenesis in heat. Critical intra-process events. General causation of intra-process events, general core process analysis and elemental analysis, two parts, cognitive and affective. Then we come to the core heat elementals and all heat elementals are divided into this eight. There is a special discussion on these elementals, what are these and how they are subdivided. So each of these like fundamental elementals is for the, is a, these are categories of elementals. 
So in this category of fundamental, we have this motivational elements, process elements, faculty elements, characteristic resultant, accumulating freedom elements. So we then uh, analyze the pathology in terms of this. Each of them will play significant role in certain pathologies. For example, let's say the psychic will play a role in journey of life where you want certain experiences which can come only from say certain addictions or certain personality disorders. So that is, you want to live it out. It's existential. The karmic part will come in all chronic difficulties, acute difficulties, mental retardation, autism, personality disorders, some forms of addiction, some forms of self-harm, Yin and Yang will be very important in bisexuality, in gender dysphoria, in uh, anything rooted in sexuality, say paranoia rooted in sexuality. Similarly, any of these fundamental elementals essentially are the Core structural and functional elements. By and large, the structural elements. So the fundamental elements are the core structural elements. So they are they are structural in the psychic system. The motivational elements are the core functional elements. And you can go from chakra to chakra. If you look at the root chakra, it is fear and anger. Sexual second Swadhisthan, it is pleasure and sexuality. Muladhar, it is power. Sorry, Manipur Chakra, it is power. Heart Chakra, Throat Chakra, creativity, aesthetics, expression. Agya Chakra, knowledge. Then above it, those chakras dealing with mysticism and spirituality. Then there are other motivations like evolution. Closure, completeness, fulfillment, energy. Process elementals. This part you will be familiar with. The stimulus strength generating effect, then effect generated, part of it expressed, part of it regulated, part of it repressed. What is the containing capacity? What is the effect contained? What are the defenses used? Excessive pathological effect going into symptoms. Faculty elementals which are used, we have seen the working of the model of the mind, how a desire is activated and how life affinity moves towards the desire. So desire is activated in a chakra, affinity is loaded onto it, affinity attracts life energy. Once it is done, a faculty elemental is solicited into the process. And usually that is knowledge or imagination or both. Then you have characteristic elementals that aid this process. At the end of the process, either you are satisfied or frustrated, either you feel happy or you feel anger or you feel sadistic or you feel masochistic. All those emotions are the resultant emotions are listed. After the experience, learning happens, schema happens. So all these are learning elements. And these are the freedom elementals which we can evoke and work upon parts of us to be free from them. So after doing all of this, the holistic pathogenesis comes about 
by in, uh, we write down the holistic field pathogenesis in this five variables. We take into account general event causation, psychoanalytic causation, cognitive affective value aspects, the in ego super ego defense work aspects, and as a result of it, we put down the holistic elemental causation. Finally, we put down the holistic elemental causation. But we factor in all the five in pathogenesis. If only this does not work, use all of this. But we describe the full pathogenesis in five points. Then we come to healing, holistic healing. And once we do holistic pathogenesis, the, all the trouble points, for each of the trouble points, we go into holistic healing. So we have medication, psychotherapy, self-work, spiritual practices, support group, social work. Then out of this entire part, how do you do therapy? So the therapy format is slightly different. It goes into five parts, safety and self-expression, problem analysis, classical deeper work as we do psychoanalytic psychotherapy, or somebody may do CBT. Affect release, this is a very distinct part. This is almost like ISTDP or ECT. And healing consolidation. Now each of these has subparts. And for doing this whole thing, we use references. This is the general epistemological process that we use. These are the epistemological elementals we use. This is the essential effect system in heat, like how is a desired activated? It can be activated by karma, by nature, by environment. Once desire is activated, what happens? There is a strength of desire based upon these things. Then there is an evaluation system. The desire gets evaluated, sensitivity comes in. Then affinity is mobilized, free energy is mobilized. Based upon free life energy, some part of life energy is mobilized and then effect is generated. Why? So desire activation, the straight desire is X, effect is Y. Now out of Y, some is contained in various ways by repression, by expression, by defensive regulation. Now excess effect has to be tolerated or it just remains as excess pathological effect Z. And that in turn creates the symptom. And each of them can be like each variable can be put in terms of high, very high, high, average, low, or very low. This has to be four. So you can put the intensity of each of these variables in front of it. And all of this helps to find out what is the root of the trouble. All that is H needs far more concern than M and least of it is L. And this is a reference of how for each of the bodies, it's a holistic healing reference sheet. How for each of the bodies, the pathies are available and how to use them based upon the person. So it's a very customized, individualized, holistic healing system.